Introducing the 2020-2 Schrodinger release. Let's take a look at some of the new features and enhancements. In this release, users will have access to the beta version of a brand new ligand design tool in Maestro. The ligand designer serves as a framework for medicinal chemists to perform both manual or guided lead optimization. It allows for the flexibility of designing in either an immersive 3D rich environment or via the simplicity of a 2D whiteboard and also introduces a hybrid 2.5D view that enables full design work in 3D but not overwhelm users with the complexity of too much 3D information. The Ligand Designer employs several medicinal chemistry tactics and workflows utilizing synthetically tractable enumerations or R-group enumerations to automate modifications to the ligand. So let's walk through several features of the Ligand Designer starting with the visualization. The Ligand Designer allows users to overlay new information about the ligand's surroundings in the binding site. For example, here we see the growth space, which shows where there is space between the ligand and the receptor, and whether it's buried in light blue or solvent exposed in darker blue. Here we can overlay the water map data if available, such as the location of unstable waters, which can then be targeted for displacement. And using pharmacophoric representations, we can visualize donors, acceptors, aromatic rings, and hydrophobic groups. These can then help highlight unsatisfied sites with the potential to form ligand receptor interactions. Not only is overlaying additional information useful, what brings the ligand designer to the next level is the ability to select any of these features which will then guide users through various lead optimization workflows. Take this example. By selecting the hydrogen bond acceptor, a notification banner will appear with instructions to run the enumeration workflow. After clicking OK, we see two possible vectors off the ligand to make a modification. By selecting one, the banner proceeds to the next step where we can click enumerate to kickstart the enumeration and docking job. And now, new ligands are enumerated with an inbuilt default library, in this case, one that is specific to forming hydrogen bond interactions with the chosen acceptor. Let's take another example. Here, we'll select an unstable water map hydration site. Again, we'll choose from a series of possible vectors off the ligand to best displace the water. Notice that we can optionally choose a position further back, which would replace this sidechain altogether. Now it's colored purple to indicate that if chosen, it will use Pathfinder's synthetically tractable reaction-based enumeration method, rather than the standard R-group enumeration. However, we'll choose this vector instead. And this time, instead of using a default R-group library, we'll change the enumeration settings to employ a custom ring decoration library. As each new enumeration is docked, the results will appear in the project. In the case of growing into a cavity, the process is similar. Display the growth space and click on the volume within the cavity to initiate the workflow. Additional workflows can be found in the workflow option menu. The attach R group workflow performs R group enumeration at a bond that you choose. It's useful to display Pathfinder bonds for this workflow, so you can enumerate at a location that can be substituted in a known synthetic route using the reaction enumeration method. The bioisosteer replacement workflow is useful for replacing selected functional groups on the ligand with a set of corresponding bioisosteers. The isosteer scanning workflow will scan for possible isosteer groups such as performing a halogen walk or a methyl walk, etc. around the ligand. The cyclized ligands workflow can be used for certain ligands where it's possible to join different ends of the ligand with a set of spaces of varying lengths. The hybridized ligand workflow uses the breed algorithm to automatically swap groups between two or more overlapping ligands essentially to crossbreed their R groups, spawning new ligands. And finally, the 2D Sketcher provides sketching tools to edit the ligand in 2D and then quickly predict the pose in 3D. 
This workflow is certainly far more superior than manual minimization in binding sites as it captures ortho and meta preferences and roughly adjusts for protein flexibility by van der Waals scaling. Now at the center of the panel, we see the multi-parameter optimization section where one can examine graphically the values of multiple properties and determine whether new ligands meet the defined acceptance criteria as shaded in green. Here we see the standard Lipinski's rule of five, but this can be edited or switched to other presets. Below, we see the property values, which update in real time from ligand changes. The MPO score is also displayed here. And finally, the post-processing section provides actions to perform on the ligands once they have been generated, such as sorting ligands by their MPO or the number of good interactions, loading the ligands directly into the FEP plus panel to calculate their relative binding free energy, and exporting the ideas to live design to share with colleagues and collaborators for further analysis and refinement. In summary, the ligand designer allows you to design your way, be it through a 2D whiteboard ideation, in a simple 3D view with reduced dimensionality, or with the full 3D protein. Use guided workflows to automate ID generation easily or perform changes manually. In short, choose your own adventure and to do so with just one dedicated panel, leveraging the best of all these panels. Now this is just a brief glimpse of the new Ligand Designer. It is in beta, so please take the opportunity to give it a test drive. We greatly appreciate your feedback, so feel free to send your notes to help at schrodinger.com. In the 2020 Dash release, Maestro now officially supports the Looking Glass holographic display. The Looking Glass serves as a holographic secondary monitor where one can visualize the 3D workspace without any need for eye straining head mounted systems. To learn more about the Looking Glass, please visit lookingglassfactory.com forward slash Schrodinger. Minor usability enhancements in Maestro include quickly selecting any visible residues involved in nonpolar interactions. This can be useful for highlighting the key residues of interest. Over in the multiple sequence viewer, still in beta, a heteromultima homology modeling workflow has been introduced. This is used to build a multi-chain structure or several single chain structures from a set of individually modeled structures. Also, now it's possible to import sequences with per residue descriptor information. The sequences can then be visualized and annotated, for example, with the color by residue property color scheme. In the Jaguar quantum mechanics panels, usability improvements have been introduced to the basis set and theory selectors. Easily type in your basis set or apply a filter to narrow down the selection. Similarly, use the search text box or filter button to list the available theoretical models. Also in QM, the spectrum plot panel can now visualize Jaguar computed Raman spectra. Finally, over in NIME, surfaces and images can be uploaded to a live report. These are just a few of the highlights of the 2020-2 Schrodinger release. As always, for the complete list of all previous enhancements and features, visit schrodinger.com forward slash new features. <laughs>